عليكم سيستر حسينة من نيجيريا السلام عليكم السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته هاو يو سيستر السلام عليكم السلام Please, I have two questions for you, Sheikh. Go ahead, I'm listening. Uh, the first question is uh, the ruling on the, uh, the sitting in between the two sujuits. Mm. That I learned that we're supposed to say Astagfirullah in the sitting, but in the event that you forget, you don't say it. What is the ruling on it? Okay, okay. Barakallah <laughs> feekhi. Yeah. Uh, as far as sitting between each two prostrations, it's a must, and also the supplication is a must to say, Allahumma rabbiq filli wa samihni wa hdini wa ajirni wa afini wa rzuqni, or any part of that. If you miss it, then you owe two prostrations for forgetfulness, because it's a must to recite this supplication as well during the sitting. Barakallah feek. So, we all know that the first lady in Egypt tried to seduce Prophet Yusuf السلام, and that was described as follows وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ الْهَمْ is a strong well she made all the precautions and prepared herself, adorned herself, locked all the doors and she imprisoned him she tricked him and she said I'm all yours she showed him her beauty and what no one should have seen but her husband so this is the ham. She, she tried to seduce him. وَهَمَّ بِهَا يعني She did desire him and he would have inclined to her desire had he not seen the manifest evidence of Allah. Read the ayah. Complete the ayah. The ayah says what? لَوْلَا أَرَّأَ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ So there was a clause, a condition. Only when he seen the manifest evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, instead of complying and inclining with her desire, rather he ran away from her. And if you read the whole story, you wouldn't have to ask this question. What the ayah says, whenever the uh, prime minister or her husband uh, broke into them and he saw them in this condition, she right away pretended that she is innocent and he was trying to seduce her and so on. Then the ayat said, وَشَهِدَ شَهِدٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا There was a young baby whom Allah gave him the power to speak in the Qadr. They said, very beautiful ruling. They said, you want to sort this out? And who is telling the truth? And who is lying? Yeah. إِنْ كَانَ قَمِيصُهُ قُدَّ مِنْ قُبُلٍ فَصَدَقَتْ وَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِينَ وَإِنْ كَانَ قَمِيصُهُ قُدَّ مِنْ دُبُرٍ فَكَذَبَتْ وَهُوَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ فَلَمَّا رَأَى قَمِيصَهُ قُدَّ مِنْ دُبُرٍ قَالَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ كَيْدِكُنَّ إِنَّ كَيْدَكُنَّ عَظِيمٌ That's it. So we don't need to read in the Israelites to know what kind of ham that happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. Basically, the following ayat says, this shahid, this witness said, look at his shirt. If his shirt, his shirt was torn, if his shirt was torn from front, he unbuttoned his shirt or he tore it, that means he was the one who was trying to seduce her and attack her. But Yusuf's story was that he was running from her. She was trying to chase him here and there. And he was running towards the door, he was trying to unlock it. And there the prime minister walked in. Said, he began by saying, in kana qamisu qudda min qubul. Check out first. If his shirt is torn from front, then he is a sinner. He's a liar and she's telling the truth. But if his shirt is torn from behind, then definitely it was her who was trying to chase him and she tore his shirt. And accordingly, kathabat wa huwa min as-sadiqeen. She lied and he is of the truthful. End of story.